Tackling HIV and AIDS is one of the greatest challenges of our time and it's a key priority for this government. World's AIDS Day gives us a chance to reflect on the people we've tragically lost to the epidemic. World AIDS Day should be every day, whereby we should share compassion, hope, solidarity, and actually to those people with HIV and AIDS, tell them that we are together and we are going to assist them in whatever way we can. According to the UN data, over 40 million people live with HIV virus today. A half of those live in sub-Saharan African countries. So the problem is direct to us, African immigrants in the UK, because we have lost loved one, or we're going to lose loved one to this deadly disease. And there are some who are here with us in the UK still suffering with the HIV and AIDS virus. Today is Wallace Day, 1st of December. And every year, we celebrate the day. A day that brings the world attention to specific issues of prevention, care, and support with regards to HIV AIDS. It's a day that we celebrate progress made in the battle against the epidemic, but also it's a day that brings to us home those challenges that are still facing us today. I learned about uh, my condition when I was pregnant. During antenatal testing, I went for the routine testing they give, and one of the tests they gave me was uh, HIV. I first refused it, and I said, you know, I'm okay, I'm a married woman, what do I want it for? So. How, how, how have you managed to live from, you know, from that time until now? How have you managed to live with the infection? I'm doing very well. Uh, of course, when I got the, uh, the positive diagnosis, I was given a lot of counselling. I was given a lot of support. I went to other HIV uh, organisations which support people living with HIV. And I was counselled. And, 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 you know, the first one year was very hard because I lost friends along the way. But now I'm coping very well, but it's still very, very hard to live with HIV because there's no much awareness out there. People have so much stigma inside them, ranging from prof health professionals to social workers, housing officers, and even to the layman. People have so much stigma and I don't blame them. It's most of them don't have awareness. Leaders are people who influence others. Celebrities are part of those. In UK, we have beauty queens who are passing their message across there that even though you're beautiful, even though you're doing well, you should also remember that HIV is real. As we, commem as we commemorate World AIDS Day, ladies and gentlemen, it is important for us to pay attention to the alarming HIV AIDS situation in Africa and the rest of the world and to assist reverse the pandemic and its impact on our lives. Although some countries and communities have made great strides in fighting HIV AIDS, further action is needed to mitigate the impact of the pandemic on our communities. Posterity will judge our generation harshly if we do not reverse the HIV AIDS pandemic. With the advancements made in the 21st century, I believe the world has the capacity to turn this huge around. Unless a cure or effective vaccine is found, the HIV AIDS epidemic 
will continue to the next generation of Africa. According to Dr. Francis, representing the New Ham PCT, she says there is an increase of infection, especially among African women in the UK, especially in New Ham. The number of HIV positive cases in Britain has doubled since 2000. In the East End of London, most of that increase has been within the African communities, and women are more affected than men. But this disease knows no ethnic, gender or age boundaries. People who have sex with an infected person put themselves at risk, wh whoever they are. About a third of people in Britain who have HIV are not aware of it. People do not necessarily have symptoms until the disease is well established. For many people, particularly men, by the time they get their diagnosis, the disease is too far advanced for treatment to be effective. People need to engage vigorously and openly with healthcare providers in discussion forums to enable them better understanding of the HIV and AIDS virus and also diseases related to HIV, something like tuberculosis. Our program tends to sometimes run towards the youth. Sexual health awareness in regards to the youth should be taken seriously. Many youth are getting sexually active at the age of 13. So what can we do? as a community to, to enable to that when they get sexually active, they actually are aware of diseases that they can get HIV. through these activities. Condoms are freely available through, through our local groups. Tests are freely available. Treatment is available. But we cannot help you unless you make that choice. The choice to protect yourself and your loved ones. The choice to know your HIV status and seek treatment if you need it and the choice to have a full disease-free life and to save your family from the scourge of HIV. Alright, my name's Dina. Um, as a student, like, there's a lot of confusion about whether, you know, if you get infected by AIDS, it's like an immediate death sentence, but it's actually like because how it attacks the immune system you actually die of something like pneumonia. So like, how do you encourage and support young people to know that you know, it's not the end of the world and they don't have to throw their lives away? Um, you're right that, um, I mean, I think there is a lot of confusion sometimes and people don't always understand the details of a whole variety of things. But I mean, young people is such an important area for us to um, do work both in helping people understand illnesses but also possibly even more importantly in prevention of um, sort of sexual health problems, sexually transmitted infections, etc., including HIV. Uh, certainly in Hackney, we do a lot of work with young people, particularly around helping them to understand about how to protect themselves. And it's important link between um, sexual health and teenage pregnancy. And basically, we work with, very closely with the schools, and we also work outside of schools with what we call kind of peer educators who try to explain things to people in kind of language that they understand and using terms that they understand and stuff. So um, we are doing a lot of work with people around that. Um, specifically, obviously, if someone had HIV and um, uh, needs to know more about the specific illness and the treatment, then um, that would be where the services in the hospital um, uh, would be, you know, quite skilled at explaining things to people. And there are specific um, hospital services, but also um, voluntary sector organisations who work um, specifically with young people who are affected by HIV, either because they've got it themselves or maybe their family members. And I'm sure it's possible to get the details of those. But in terms of the work we're doing, it's mainly around prevention, but certainly, like I say, there are good services around that um, actually help young people to understand more um, in, t in terms of um, the specific ways in which HIV can affect them.